QuickBooks Desktop 2023, Sales Tax and Bank Fees. Well, let's do it with Intuit's QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in QuickBooks Desktop Bank Feed Practice File going through the setup process we do every time in the View dropdown. We got the Hide Icon Bar, the Open Windows List checked off. The Open Windows, they're open on the left-hand side. Reports drop down, Company and Financial opening up the major financial statements with a profit and loss. Change the range, 010122 to 123122. And then customize it so we can fonts and numbers to change. 214 okay yes and okay then the reports drop down again company and financial but this time the balance sheet standard we're going to customize it up top changing the range in from 010122 to 1231.22 and then fonts and numbers that needs to come up to 14 okay yes and okay We'll also open the bank feeds and the banking drop down bank feeds. The bank feed center would only be there if you got the bank feeds turned on, which we did in a prior presentation, opening that up. So now I'm going to be in the unrecognized items. And we're now thinking about the sales tax. Now the sales tax is something that's going to kind of throw a wrench into our system of trying to create the financial statements directly from the bank feeds as taxes typically do throw wrenches in systems so if i go then to the home page here and just think about how the sales tax works i'm looking at this from a united states perspective but if you've got a usage tax you'd have a, a similar uh, kind of process in the united states the sales tax is going to be imposed not on the federal level but possibly on the state and local level and you might be subject to you know, multiple different sales tax depending on the type of industry uh, that you are in and the locations that you do business uh, in. And usually the sales tax will also be applied not to service items, but generally to inventory type items. Now, the general idea of the sales tax is that the tax is actually supposed to be imposed on the person that is purchasing the goods and services. We, the company then, are just the tax collector. The government has forced us to be their tax collector. So as we make sales, we're gonna be collecting the tax from the customer and then paying over the tax we collected from the customer to the government. Now you can imagine the systems we've been looking at here is trying to have a system on the revenue side, on the customer side of things, where we can basically collect the money and wait till it clears the bank before we record it as revenue, thereby using the, the deposit form through the bank feeds to record the transaction, which isn't the natural form used to record revenue as we've seen in the past, which even if on a, a cash-based system would be the sales receipt on an accrual-based system would be the invoice. So if we have the taxes, then the deposit form's not going to do what we would normally do if we had the full system of taxes set up for sales tax within the system. So we might still be able to put a workaround there if we want to still wait till everything clears the bank before recording uh, the sales tax. However, let's first think about how the actual system is designed to work and then we'll go in here and we'll think about how we might be able to adjust things and try to calculate a manual sales tax. So if you're gonna turn sales tax on in the system, then the general process would be, we're gonna charge sales tax when we have an invoice or a sales receipt, and then we're going to pay the sales tax usually using a sales tax widget, which will be appearing up here in the vendors uh, area once we have the sales tax then set up. 
So let's just, and there's three kind of components to the sales tax. One, you got to turn the sales tax on. You've got to set up the items and so on. When you turn the sales tax on, that will help you to calculate the proper attacks, which will then appear in these uh, calculations for the invoices and sales receipts. Then you got to set up items, whether so that the items can determine whether something is taxable or not. And then you got to think about the customers and see if there's customers that possibly are, are exempt from the tax or possibly if you have different locations, you can set up customers for different locations. Let's set that up quickly and just see what it looks like. So if I go to the edit dropdown preferences and we go down to the sales tax company preferences, I can say, let's turn the sales tax on. Boom, sales tax is on. And then we could set up our sales tax items here. If we so choose, we can also do it by going to the lists and items dropdown. I'll do it here quickly. I'm just gonna make some example items. So I'm gonna say, this is a sales tax item. This is the same area with the service or inventory items, but we want sales tax. Sales tax name, I'm gonna say, let's say this is California State. Sales tax description, California State. I'm gonna make this 4%, which is not which is just an example. I wanna make the total 5%. So I'm just gonna make an example of 4%. Tax agency, I'm just gonna say California State tax collector, which is a generic thing too. Again, I'm just keeping it kind of generic. I'm going to quick add, that's a vendor. So I'm going to add it and say, okay, I'm going to set up another item, which is going to be a sales tax item. And I'm going to pretend this is the Calif is, is going to be California local tax. So we got the state and local, I'm going to say that's 1%. The total of the two will add up to 5%. I'm going to call this California local tax collector as the agency just for generic problem's sake quick add and then okay and then i'll set up one more which is going to be a group which i'm just going to group those two items together i know i'm doing this quick but i'm just giving i just want to give an overview of how the system works so it's going to be a group and we're going to set up the items in the group which are going to include this one and this one so now we've got the full 5%, the group name, California sales tax. So there we have it. And so I'm gonna say, okay, okay. And then what I want to show up in here is just gonna be that group. That group is what I want to show up as the default. So your most common sales tax will be the group, which will show up by default uh, if something is taxable, which will be driven by the item. So I'm gonna say, okay, and then make all, all existing customers taxable. That's the general rule. And make all existing non-inventory uh, inventory parts taxable. I'm gonna say, okay, and say, okay. Closes everything up. I'm gonna go back into the company homepage. And then the next thing we set up are the items. Items are gonna be used when I make a sale invoice uh, for the inventory or the service items with these two forms. So lists drop down, item list. Note that we also have the sales tax items here. So we could have set up our sales tax items directly in here as well. Although when you put the default in there, you need to make the default as the group in the company settings that we looked at. Item drop down, new item. I'm just gonna set up a generic inventory item. And so I'm gonna say inventory item number three, let's say. And I'm gonna say that we buy it for uh, let's say uh, $300 cost of goods sold will be the account we hit when we sell it. I'm not going to put a, a vendor there and then we sell it for $500, let's say, and it's a taxable item. So it's a taxable item. And then we're going to say the income account, we'll just say a sales generic income account and inventory will be there when we purchase the item. So, and let's just say that we have one on hand right now. Let's say we have like 10 on hand as of, of uh, let's say 010122. So that should be good. This will record a beginning balance, this one right here. So this will actually record a transaction of the 300 times 10 for the inventory to be on hand, I believe. So let's say save it and close it. And so then if I go into, it closed up all my reports. <laughs> Let's open the reports back up. Let's go into the profit and loss. I'll, I'll, I won't make you watch me do this. I'm gonna open the reports. 
Okay, the reports are open. So now we've got the inventory items. You can see the journal entry it made. If I if I go into here, it made it with an inventory adjustment and the other side it put to opening balance. I'm not gonna get too into detail on those opening balance or, or beginning balances right now, but, uh, but there's the other side, just so you can see the transaction. I just want the inventory on hand so we can record something with the uh, sales tax. So then I'm gonna go back to the homepage. One other thing we might want to consider now that we've got the inventory item that's gonna drive whether something is subject to sales tax is the customer. If I go into the customer center and I say, I pick a customer, let's just make up, well, here's customer number one, let's just use that one. If I double click on them and we go into their tax settings, notice the tax code says they're subject to tax. If they were not subject to tax, we can then say they're not subject to tax. And then even though we have a taxable item we're selling, it wouldn't be charging them sales tax. The tax item, then usually if we don't have anything here, it will always be defaulting to the one we put in the preferences, which is the group. If we had multiple tax items, then we would need to set up each customer to make sure that we're taxing them in the proper location. So, so here we don't really need it, but I'll do the same group and we'll say, okay. And then we can either have a, an invoice if it's an accrual component or a sales receipt. Even if we're on a cash based system, we would still kind of need a sales receipt as opposed to waiting till something clears with a deposit in order for the system to calculate the sales tax. That's why we still have to use kind of a full service system if we want sales tax to do what it does. So let's see how that would work. If I go into this one, customer number one, make this as of I th most of our stuff was like 100122. And let's say we're gonna sell item three, I believe it was and there's $500. So now it's charging this out. And what's this going to do? It's gonna increase, we, we're gonna put this into the um, undeposited funds. We could deposit it directly into the checking account, but the default is to go into undeposited funds. We might talk more about that later, but then the other side is gonna to go to sales, the amount going into undeposited funds being the full amount, including the sales tax. The other side goes into sales, but only the 500, not including the sales tax. And then the sales tax, which is now being calculated, as you can see here with the 5%, is going to go not to revenue, but off the income statement onto a liability account of sales tax payable. Notice that the sales tax does not hit the income statement using this method. That's what is preferred because it's not something that we're charging in theory. It's something that the government is charging and forcing us to be their tax collector. So we're not going to record the $25 as income and then expense $25 when we pay it. When we pay it, we're just going to take it off of the balance sheet. So it's a non-income statement item. It just goes up and down on the balance sheet. And then we're going to also have inventory, which is going to, I think we put on as 400 that's driven by the item, decreasing inventory, the other side going to cost of goods sold. That's not where our main focus is right now. Let's save it and close it and just check that out. If I go to the balance sheet, we now have this undeposited funds that went up by the full amount, the 525. The other side is going to revenue on the profit and loss in sales of the 500 only, not including the 25 sales tax. And then the difference is going into the liability account of $25 sales tax payable which we would then have to pay to the government at some future point, which would be lowering this amount and lowering the tax return. So then we also had inventory impacted here. So inventory is going down by the 300 and that's driven by the item and cost of goods sold. Just so you can see the inventory, that's not where our focus is, but cost of goods sold is, is impacted as well. So if I go back then to the, the balance sheet, so now we've got this sales tax payable and we'd have to pay off the sales tax payable. Now, how do the bank feeds fit into this? Well, the bank feeds then, I can't really wait till something clears the bank because I got to calculate the sales tax would be the, if I want the full service sales tax on. So I'm going to have to create the transaction myself here and at least make this transaction or possibly make the full deposit uh, into the system. So if I go to record deposit, for example, and then I'm gonna pick this one, okay. 
Now I'm gonna take it out of undeposited funds and put it into uh, the checking account. So I'm gonna save and close this. That'll be as of, let's make it as of 10 one, that's fine. And then now it goes into the checking account. So undeposited funds is now is now gone and it goes into the checking account up top. So now I can go into my bank feeds. How would the bank feeds fit in? I have to open them back up. They closed them again. Bank feed center. Then you'd have a deposit uh, going, going into the bank and I'd have to use the matching tool over here in order to match, meaning the bank feeds wouldn't be used in order to create the transaction, but rather just used to match up to the transaction that I had to enter on my end. So that would be the full service way to do this. And, and then of course, you'd have to pay the sales tax generally using the sales tax widget right here. And then you'd pay the sales tax and that would create another check form. And if you want to use the sales tax widget, once again, you can't wait till the transaction clears the bank to record it, but rather need to record it with the sales tax widget and then match it out to the bank feeds. Now you might have to say, well, what if could we do a workaround so that I could try to make all my sales, just deposit them into the bank and then use these, the deposits to record. How can I work the sales tax into an easy system like that instead of turning on the sales tax and whatnot? Is there, is there an easy workaround that I could work if I have a small, you know, cash based system or something uh, like that? Well, one method you can try is to say, okay, every time I make a sale, I'm going to, I'm going to make the sale, including the sales tax. And then I'm just going to put that in the sales price. So in other words, I'm not going to wait till someone comes up to the register and then say, Hey, yeah, now sales tax. Now your now your amount went up by $25. Instead, I'm just going to say, no, this is the price plus the sales tax and charge them, including the sales tax. And then wait till the transaction clears the bank. If I want to be on a cash based system, record it all as revenue. And then when I make the sales tax payments, I'm going to have to repay the government, whatever I owe them, and I'll decrease cash and actually decrease the sales account so that I'll be back in the proper spot after I make that second payment. So that might look something like this. For example, if I open up Excel, I'm going to format the entire Excel worksheet, right click. I'm going to format it. I like to go with uh, currency brackets and I'm going to, I'm going to keep the decimals. I want decimals, only two of them though. And then, so there we have that. And so let's just see what, let's just write down what we had when we made that sale. We said that with the sales price, sa sales price was $500. And then we charged sales tax rate. The rate was 0.05% or 5%. How, if I percentify that and underline it. And so that means that the sales tax was equal to 500 times 5% or $25. And so that means the total, the total price, including sales tax was 500 plus 25. So I can also, I can also get there a little bit more easily. I'm going to make this column skinny by saying, okay, well, if the sales price is 500, then what's the price going to be including sales tax? So we're going to say the rate is going to be equal to 1.05 or 125% and underline that. So that means that my total price that I can charge 500 times 105 is 125, right? So when I, when I sell my merchandise, I'm not going to say, yeah, it's $500. When you bring it up to the register, I calculate the sales tax on it and we get up to the 525. We're just going to say, Hey, the sticker price, including sales tax is 525 uh, at this point in time to simplify the sales process. And then when I make the sales, then I can sell them. If I want to make the deposit into my bank account and wait till everything clears the bank, then. I, I would record this full amount basically as revenue. So when it clears the bank, I would, I would record it into the system with a transaction looking like this. It would be cash would go up by 525. And then I would have the, the revenue go up by the negative 525, which isn't exactly correct, 
because now my revenue would be overstated by $25, right? And so then I'd have to say, okay, then I'm gonna pay the sales tax at some, like if I collect the sales tax for the first month, then I'm gonna have to pay the sales tax in, in say the following month. So, so if I collected this in January, maybe I have to pay the sales tax by the end of February. So I'd have to go into January sales and notice what I can't do. I can't really say sales. If I say my sales, including the sales tax was 525, this number, then I can't really just take 0.05% of that and say, okay, that means my sales tax is 25, right? You would think that that would, that you'd pay then 20, 26, 25, but that's too high because, because this sales, amount actually includes the sales tax. So what you have to do is kind of back out the sales tax. So it, it really looks something like this algebraically, right? It really looks something like this. You're saying, okay, well, if the sales are really gonna be kind of the unknown here, right? And then the rate that we have, I'm gonna use this rate, the 105 would get me to my end result the total the total sales the total amount that we collected in the month which would be the we said the 525 then we can back into the sales which would be then this number divided by this number algebraically and so that means that the sales tax is actually the difference between the two this minus this the 25 dollars not the 2625 which we can recalculate just to double check it we could say okay if we had $500 sales times 1.05 that should get us to the end result of the 525 right so so you could then make your sales based on including the sales price and then include them when you make the sale so for example if I went into QuickBooks here and we said okay if I went to my profit and loss and let's imagine that we made these sales 2000 uh, 26444 and all those are subject to sales tax right so now I'm gonna I would do the same calculation I'd have to say okay if that's the case then I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller I'm gonna I'm gonna say those those sales are or this is, this is like this is really total collected is going to be the 265044 two six five zero point four four but I can't really just multiply that times 0 0.05 if that's the sales tax rate because again that number includes includes the sales involved you know that includes the sales tax so once again I've, I've really got to say okay well that means that the 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 sales I don't really know that's the unknown and then the rate I'm gonna have is 1.05, 105% should get me to the amount that I collected, the total that I collected, which is known to be this. So that means I can back into it and say, say, okay, that means that this is gonna be this divided by that. So there we have it. I could double check it and say this times this and so so there we have it so then then you'd have like two transactions so the difference here would be the sales tax would be this minus this so if i was to see so there's obviously again there's going to be a difference otherwise we would be kind of overpaying the sales tax so when i record all the sales all the sales would would end up with a transaction which would look something like cash went up by the total of the the 265044 and then revenue goes up by 265044 but then i'm going to calculate my sales tax and bring revenue back down so now i'm going to bring revenue back down which is unnatural but right because we overstated revenue now we're going to bring revenue back down and then cash is going to go out we'll see that go through the through when we make the payment we could wait till that clears the bank as well and so now the net revenue will be properly calculated at the 2524 here after we do the transactions and that way we can kind of stay in a cash-based system if you really wanted to uh 
even if even if you have to deal with sales tax, which can be kind of an, uh, a confusing issue until you get a until you get used to it. So that's the that's the uh, general idea or some concepts that could be useful to work around the wrench in the system of taxes, in this case, the sales tax.